for the kind introduction and uh, we're just having a discussion uh, you know about what all is happening in the digital commerce i think we don't need to emphasize how it has changed the business and uh, the business deals even the consumer experience i think we we experience it on a daily basis but what we need to now understand is from these experts here is uh, what is the right way to do it a sustainable way to do it an effective way to do it that's the conversation about we have some 25 minutes and i want to keep to the time uh, let me start with you mr banerji uh give me a sense of uh, what how has uh, are we just having a discussion on quick commerce i just want to refer to that how has it changed the expectations uh, in the uh digital commerce and uh, what kind of changes are happening or is leading to uh, and how are you dealing and coping with those changes so hi my name is avinava banerji uh i'm the head of global ecom capabilities for pepsico uh we are a fairly simple business uh, we make fun products like chips snacks drinks and which we make move sell so we are a fairly large 91 billion dollar company uh so for us frankly uh, quick commerce in india has been a boon we are in the impulse space so typically what research has shown that if an impulse is not fulfilled within 17 minutes the impulse goes away yeah so that's the research so we want to tap into that window of 17 minutes and uh, what quick commerce has enabled us is to from that impulse to that fulfillment you know we get it through quick commerce okay so that's been fabulous the second thing is when you look at quick commerce uh people mostly have decided what they want to buy so they are not really looking for discovery unlike in a nike where you're looking for a you know a lipstick by terry or makeup by mario whatever that is uh but you know you've kind of decided the brand and you just want it fulfilled and you want it fast so for large brands like us it's important because we are first on the mind we just want to make sure that on the app we are first to find yeah so that's been great for us we've been growing tremendously on quick commerce and uh, quick commerce didn't exist pre you know 2019 it was there so it's been great and uh, we are constantly thinking where is the shopper going tomorrow so we don't know what new models are going to come so it's been great <laughs> thank you uh, uh pritika you know uh, as far as leading uh, in the digital commerce space is concerned uh, what are the critical elements of a superior customer experience and an approach that really makes it happen makes you a leader in the digital commerce what are those factors according to you thanks for the question um, so again it's not just digital commerce right today if we talk about the consumer digital experience um we know as a matter of fact that 60 to 65 percent of the consumers start their purchase decision or purchase journey online right either they are going to google or an amazon or a flipkart and figuring out what is it that they really want to buy to address the need that they have um so but still we know that while such a large chunk of audience is actually going online to do that research um e retail still is just 7 to 8 percent of the business or the retail business in india today right so that means there is you know your purchase decision making is happening online but the purchase in reality may be happening offline so it's not just digital commerce we know for a fact that the customer experience online kind of impacts your overall business today all of us are consumers here right um if we don't get a response to a query online in the next 10 minutes when we raise a complaint we feel that okay this brand does not care about me why should i buy from them anymore so that's the kind of urgency that consumers have 72% of the consumers want the brands to understand and expects the brand to understand ki this is what i need this is my requirement and hence serve it to me so i think somewhere um, as a brand what we focus on and all of us should focus on are kind of you know three things that it narrows down to um one being seeing the consumer in a single view that's really important today we don't know where the consumer journey starts and where it ends we know the consumer is online we know he buys in store so how do i ensure as a brand that i'm reaching out to that consumer with a similar messaging time and again 
um, giving them the exact experience that they're looking for, right? So if I'm searching for which fan suits my requirement, I should be giving them that content. So, but when they go into the store, if the experience is completely polar, um, you know, opposite of what they saw online, then it's a disconnect. So having that single view of the consumer is critical, right? Where the consumer is in the consumer journey, so that when they walk into a store or when they're purchasing the final product on Amazon or Flipkart or the brand store, they know what they're buying and the brand knows what to serve them. Um, and that kind of leads to the personalization element also. Today, consumers expect personalized offers, personalized communication, and we know that if it's a personalized communication to the brand, the consumer's engagement with the brand kind of increases, right? It improves your media efficiency by 30%. That's proven by multiple researches that have happened in the industry. So that's, again, a very critical element. Um, the second piece for me in the consumer digital experience, again, becomes the ease of you know, ease and convenience, as quick commerce is one element of that. Um, the second piece would be how easily discoverable your products are. I need, a, you know, particular, I need to buy a Pepsi or a soft drink for a party, how easily can I access that? Or when they're shopping online in digital commerce space, how easily can they check out from the website? How easily can they check out from a social or, a, or an, you know, e-commerce platform? What are the brand options that the brand is giving them to make their life simpler. Is there an EMI? Because I come from consumer durables industry, so I know that EMI is a big hit with consumers. Nobody wants to pay 30, 40,000 for a product right away. Is there an EMI option? Is there a buy now, pay later option? So those things kind of add to the ease, right? And the third piece obviously is, uh, again, from a digital experience point of view, which becomes very critical is taking that follow up. Don't let your consumers feel that they've just bought the product so you've abandoned them, right? How do you keep that feedback loop alive? How do you kind of reach out to them time and again? Again, with the personalized communication, reviews, ratings, all of us know, you know, today, if you're buying a lipstick or you're buying an air conditioner for your house, you end up going and checking what are the reviews online, right? So that matters a lot. Um, so how do you get your consumers who have bought from you to keep giving you feedback? And how do you ensure that you're constantly engaging with them? Um, whether it's to upsell, cross-sell, or just keep them engaged. So I think these are the three things which matter the most from a consumer experience point of view from my view. Yeah, I also want you to touch upon briefly on this, you know, how uh, your category has moved to quick commerce and how the consumer behavior is changing. I mean, you would not buy an AC earlier in 10 minutes, right, would you? Or five minutes, now you do, right? Well, what does it mean? I mean, what does it show? I mean, uh, how do you read this? So I think... Uh, Again, e-commerce, for consumer durables, while e-com is very, very important uh, as a play in terms of the business, uh, but it's the larger you know, players, marketplaces like Amazon and Flipkart, which have been dominating it. But with this shift in consumer behavior, where people are ready to pay for that convenience that the you know, quick commerce platforms kind of provide you, it's important to tap into it. And uh, you know, we have realized that there are certain categories which kind of lend themselves beautifully to quick commerce within consumer durable industry also, whether it's a, so there are certain products which you just need to be fixed or have immediately. Ab khana bana rahe ho, mixer kharab ho gaya, you'll not wait two days for a mixer to be delivered or you'll not immediately step out and buy a mixer grinder. So today if a mixer breaks down in my house, I'll end up buying it on Blinkit and just call for whatever brand is available and just buy that, right? So that is important. If you are, we were in fact discussing this, that why are people buying mixers, kettles, again, gifting, you know, when you are going to somebody's house, it's a housewarming, people do buy appliances as gifts. Um, lighting as a category, bulb kharab ho gaya, you need that bulb to be replaced immediately, right? You'll not, and it's the convenience that you pay for. How many times do we actually think, Ki chalo, let's go to the electrical shop and actually buy a bulb and come back? So that's why I think quick commerce, it will take its own time, it won't scale up immediately, but it has definitely got, you know, caught the consumer's attention and we can see that big shift happening. For our category, it will be a slow burn, but it will move towards that. Cars are not moving there for sure, right? Cars are not sure. Yatnesh, you know, you have a uh, primarily a off offline heavy uh, brand, you know, in that sense, you know, where people would really love to touch and feel and understand, and the purchase cycle is pretty long. How do you maintain trust with uh, con customers in this digital uh, era where, where they don't have time to spend on offline purchases? How do you do in your category? Okay, so good evening, everyone. Uh, I think my category is quite different from the 
let's stop the three we are sitting i think me and uh, mahif are sharing the quite a common insight but the consumers are the same the same consumers who is buying from the blinket the pepsi or buying uh, the air fryer of this thing the same consumer is there for the our category also the in this era of the digital what the consumers are doing they are doing the exploration and evaluation simultaneously they explore also they evaluate also these are happening into simultaneously that's why brand lose and untrust onto the daily basis so you have to be very very vigilant on this thing now if our category specifically what we try to do we try to use the whatever the tech or whatever the uh, way we develop the communication with them it should be the very very responsible way what kind of the communication we put it into the various digital medium it should be the very very informative because consumers are here coming not for just closing their transaction they are coming more for validating the information also so it's our responsibility how true and how transparent information we can share so that they should feel us the more trustworthy second thing i think uh, we respect the privacy nowadays the so many tools are there where you can do the retargeting earlier the communication or advertisement getting uh, plays now it's more is toward the context more toward the native side so we try to communicate so that it should not intrude their privacy so that there should not be any break of the trust on this thing and the last thing whatever the way we do whatever the information they share to us we try to use their information very very responsibly very very sensibly because ultimately they are leaving this information whatever the mobile number whatever the email number whatever their home address for the visit everything we have to use it in a very digital secure manner so that it should not hurt their trust with the brand so using the tech responsibly taking respecting their privacy and making the digital in more secure manner that's the way we try to build the trust with them wonderful uh, something similar for you mahip you know not very of course a different but not very different because again uh, offline heavy offline first category how do you maintain that digital trust that digital experience you know uh, what is the approach that you adopt hello hi guys uh, my name is mahip i manage marketing for pepper fry uh, thank you for the question so um, so i think very important question i think the category that i am in right it is not a exciting category you know doesn't excite kids saying that you know pepsi chahiye kya aapko right but i think at the same time when you want to buy a furniture is once in a lifetime that you will like you know build your house right or you are really replacing something which was there in your house for like years so um, how digital plays an important role is it's basically the touch points right uh, when you run an omni channel uh, uh, you know business it's very important for you for you know large logistics e-commerce that people would want to come touch and feel and see whether they buy it online or they don't buy it online depends upon uh, you know their own choice but i think today if you are not digital it's very difficult for you uh, you know to survive because every touch point right we were talking about quick commerce i think everybody has a phone today in fact india india is on 85% on mobile phones uh, and still 30% is of the household still does not have you know internet in the houses so uh, so my point is that if you are not there digital you do not have a website or an app or an m site uh, how do you want customers to come and see everything in the store right uh, this is your browsing pattern and just to give you an example when we look at the sessions online versus offline and try to merge this data uh, you would see that uh, you know your 30% of the session will happen online on desktop where you know people actually select the product they keep browsing it so it's basically 2.3x times on the mobile phones then you will also see the same customer also visits the store and depending on the offer if he is coming on the weekday versus weekend it is his call that you know where he wants to buy right uh, we are still 45% online this is surely large percentage of what i know pepper fry was earlier from 25% to 45% uh but i would say that everything uh, today is digital so if you're not digital it's very difficult for you to make your brand stand out i think in the market specifically in our place where you know everything is unbranded right um 11 minutes i have six questions so i want to come to all of you uh, uh let me come to you abhinav uh, uh, you know uh, 
Oh, a digital space, uh, digital space is cluttered, you know. There's so much, there's an information overload. First of all, if I talk about digital marketing uh, and you have to stand out, what are the best ways uh, to do that according to you? Ooh. So I think, uh, I think the responsibility of standing out in a very cluttered environment like digital it stays with the brand, right? And increasingly, what we are seeing is the costs of building brands online is increasing. Uh, thankfully, PepsiCo has great creatives, you know, so we bring it, our, we just bring it alive on the shelves, you know, to start with. Uh, but frankly, what, what we do is we follow the shopper along their journey, right from search till checkout and delivery. So first is we want to make sure that we build up brands using the right search terms. So make sure that on search we are winning, our products are winning on search. Yeah, so that's the first one. As you go further, one, you can search for the brands, you have to find the right brand which makes some meaning to you, okay? So we also constantly are looking for the right brands and portfolio and benefits and claims which match that search. And thirdly, what, what increasingly we are trying to do is, how do I bring the brand alive on the digital shelf? So how do I put the best version of PepsiCo on the digital shelf? You can't touch and feel online, but then the onus of bringing it alive through high-res images, descriptions, product detail pages, lies with us. So what we want to make sure that building brands online, I think, you have to go across the shopper journey, starting with search, going right through checkout, delivery, and the experience, yeah? So I think just to, uh, I think, add to his point, right? I think what you need to do if your brand exists for several years is, uh, do people still remember you? Uh, do they know what are the offerings? And specifically, if, uh, if your offerings are changing over a period of time, right? it is very important for you to communicate with them. I think uh, while we do marketing, I think it's very important to ensure that your existing base knows about it, that what's the brand doing, right? Forget about it that they will come to buy or not, but you'd never know that how the word of mouth is spreading between, you know, that community. And uh, specifically for us, offline is a huge community. We have 200 plus stores in India. And we keep doing these events, which is on Wednesdays and Thursdays, like, you know, a painting and, you know, and several other things. So making your brand stand out, I think it's very important that what's your brand and what it's doing for us, the vicinity is important, right? So when the vicinity is important, you would want people to talk about you that, you know, hey, Pepper Fry was doing this thing and, you know, this, this is great. You know, my kids really enjoyed it, right? And, and the kids will actually bring people to the store, right? Now, this is just a way of marketing, but the point is that you cannot, uh, you cannot afford to lose a Tom because the brand would have spent, you know, millions of rupees in just building that one name that, you know, we all know. So, yeah. Thank you. Um, Pritika, you know, we read the reviews and uh, the feedback, and then we buy, buy from a consumer point of view. From a brand point of view, how do you t take that into account and improve? Uh, how do you manage that? What are the strategies that you use to improve the offerings? Um, see, it's basic consumer behavior. All of us read reviews. It's, in fact, now we are coming to a situation where I was in a consumer emotion recently, and you know the consumer said, "Ha, but ye to shayad aapke brand nahi khudi reviews kara di honge." So people are also getting into the place where they are not trusting the reviews that are there online. But uh, I think large part of it obviously is consumer driven, especially on platforms like Amazon, Flipkart, etc. Um, what we have started doing, and this is something that we have recently initiated, is while we used to track reviews and ratings and figure out what is it that consumers are talking about the brand or a particular product, now we monitor it on a every fortnight basis. There is a dashboard of sorts that we release internally in Crompton across categories. Um, and 
let me tell you, it's the most genuine form of consumer feedback that you can get, whether it's issues related to your packaging, whether it's issues related to missing parts, or in our case, where, you know, after sales service, where installation warranty are a big, big uh, chunk of, you know, the consumer experience, that also is something that we are kind of monitoring. How can we streamline that import, share it with our supply chain, our manufacturing, our after sales service team, and streamline that process? So we are kind of putting, you know, the pieces together right now, but uh, in my previous experience also at Godrej, we used to do this on a, you know, regular basis. Every month we used to see what are the reviews. In fact, uh, in GCPL, we had actually identified a product issue just by listening to the Amazon reviews because we were getting some, you know, chatter from trade that there is a particular issue with a particular batch of products that is there in the market, and then we identified the same trend online and that's where we kind of realized that okay this is an issue so we went back to R&D how can this be fixed we took all that data so I think it's important for any brand uh, you know in today's day and age whether it's a legacy brand whether it's a startup whether it's a new age brand to listen to what consumers are saying because there is no more genuine feedback that you can get from a con other than a consumer who's actually paid for the product so that's critical right uh Yadnesh, you know, sustainability and uh, business, you know, is becoming an increasingly important conversation. Uh, how important is sustainability in digital commerce and what kind of sustainable practices uh, do you kind of follow to make it happen? Hello? So like time's up is showing in my screen, same way for the sustainability I'm also. Looking at it. Times is up. It should not be the end, it should from the start. Uh, I think we all are reading how the uh, temperature uh, heat waves are going into the Europe, the first time 40 degrees reaching. So it's all into the, it's not the anyway the uh, topic of the conference discussion. We all are realizing it is everywhere. We as a brand, it's in our name also, we are tracking it very closely. We have a separate team set up who keep monitoring it. You see, I will just leave some of the statistics and uh, which we keep doing the research. There is a, uh, we had uh, taken initiative in terms of the tree plantation and the removing the plastic. Because as the plastic grows into the environment, it does not allow tree to grow. If tree will not grow, we will not get a timber and if we will cut the tree, then also the environment. So that's the cycle. There is a 8 million metric ton plastics end up into the ocean every year. It's like a one truck of the plastic going into the ocean every minute. And this is not the small truck Tata Char Sosat. It's a 16 ton kind of the truck going up to the every minute. So that's kind of the impacts are happening. Now, we are talking about the e-commerce thing. Uh, the kind of the packaging it requires. There is a layered packaging is required. And then we are also providing the, some wood waste for this layered packaging. This bubble wrap, this, uh, those cartons, they are very tough to destroy. They are very tough to go into the convert into the recyclable. The, we're talking about the quick commerce. We are getting into the more into the impulsive behavior. So what you will do, you will more use the single use plastic to make the packaging on this thing. And all this, there are the certain uh, plastics mentioned is the recyclable. Guys, these are the facts. Only 14% among the total use of the plastic, only the 14%, around 14% is the recyclable. And within the recyclable, not even the 50% get recyclable. So the whatever you are producing is all going, wasting into the environment. So I think for the convenience of the commerce or the time, we should not harm the environment. So it's, it's not the responsibility of the seller or the buyer. It's the both the side responsibility should be. Absolutely. Before I end, I just want to take uh, liberty uh, of a 30 second quote from uh, Avinava, from you, like, what is the final thing, uh, how would you say winning in a digital commerce, what is the 30th second thing that you would like to share? What is the ultimate uh, playbook? It's investing in technology, yes, yeah, so 30 second, uh, tip to anyone and I'm very passionate about is how does a brand invest in technology? Most of our customers are technology first. We are CPG brands, so how do you constantly stay abreast, use AI, generative AI, and all the latest developments to keep, uh, probably to be in step with our customers and uh, retailers? All right, okay. 
See, for 20 seconds, the time is already up. Yeah, uh, so I would say uh, feedbacks from the customer. I think that's the biggest point that I think uh, we miss out being it's a volume or you know non-volume, but if you are hearing your customers, I think you will know what your brand needs to do. Right. I think uh, I will say do it responsibly. Responsibility toward the consumer, responsibility developing the tech, and responsibility toward the environment also. So everything you have to do it, all the three things you have to do it responsibly. I think for me again, it's you know a mix of tech, tech and what your consumers are saying. That's the most important thing. Thank you. Thank you for your time and over to you Rahul. Thank you.